As a church leader serving the marriages in your congregation or community, thinking about the number of resources that are available to you uh, sometimes can be staggering. It can be overwhelming. And I remember early on in our work here in San Antonio, how I sat down with a really dynamic young church leader and he shared this with me. He said, Carl, he said, can you please, for me, <laughs> work through the mountain of resources available to me as a church leader and tell me, please, what are one or two or three of the very best resources I should use serving the marriages in my community? And, uh, and that was a, a task that we sought to, uh, to help this church leader with. But I think it's something that many of us struggle with in our communities. As we think about the resources that are available to us in our communities, we think that our work is nationally informed. And what do I mean by that? Our work is nationally informed because there are hundreds of authors and speakers, of resource creators, of researchers, of influencers, of thought leaders, people that come from a faith-based perspective, people that come from an evidence-based perspective. There are hundreds and hundreds of people and organizations who are creating best-in-class resources for marriages, resources that are transformative to the life and marriages of families around us. We have an overwhelming number of people working on creating resources for us. In fact, we believe that there are more than 300 people and organizations who are creating resources for marriages who collectively produce over a thousand marriage resources that are available to us. But the problem is, is that very few of these resources actually reach the need in our context of our local communities. I don't know of a single marriage resource that reaches more than 1% of their potential audience. Our work is nationally informed because we have these amazing national organizations that are creating resources for us but our work must ultimately be locally driven. And that's where you, the local church leader, the local community leader, that's the important role that you play in helping these resources flow deep into the heart of your community. And why is it? It's because people in local communities are closest to their problems and they know best how to overcome them. The key to reaching more than 1% of the marriages in our communities, the key to reaching these is using best-in-class resources is found in empowering the dynamic and brilliant local leaders like here. So there are 300 organizations creating resources for marriages. There's over a thousand resources being created collectively. And so what's your response to that? Well, here's some of the common responses that I get when I talk about a thousand resources available to us. First of all, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Please help. That's too many. This mountain of resources is overwhelming me. <laughs> the second is maybe uh, an observation is, isn't there a lot of duplication and overlap? Do we really need a thousand resources? Which leads to the third thing that I hear from people. It's the first one again. I'm overwhelmed. Please help <laughs> with three exclamation points. But coming back to that really important question, do we really need a thousand resources for marriage? My answer is yes, we do. And why is that? Well, first of all, let's just uh, consider the incredible size and scope of the problem we're addressing. In the United States, there are 61 million married couples. And in the context of our local community, there are thousands and thousands of marriages, maybe tens of thousands of struggling marriages in your city. And that leads us to the fact that the unique couples, the unique needs that couples face could represent thousands of different possibilities. Why is it? We need a thousand resources in our community because there are 10,000 unique problems that people have in their marriage. Now, wait a minute. Are there really 10,000 problems that people can have? Well, no. That's correct. But let me change it to say this, is that there's probably a hundred really common problems people have in their marriage, but there's a thousand or maybe even 10,000 scenarios with which those problems present themselves. Let me communicate it this way. The context of the problem that people face in their marriage 
is just as important as the problem itself. And the circumstances surrounding the problem that couples are having are just as important as the problem itself. You see, context informs the very best solutions that we can have to address the problems. And resources ultimately are solutions, right? So the greater the specificity that we can bring to defining a problem, the more effectively we can address and solve that same problem. Here's the thing that we know, is that people intuitively understand context. And as such, they are searching for solutions to their marriage problems using layers of criteria. Let me explain. We're going to go deep on this for a minute, just to understand why we need so many resources for marriages, is that people search using layers of criteria. This is an example of how someone might use layers of criteria to find the solution to a very specific problem that they face. This might be a problem as defined by an engaged couple. So we are an engaged couple and we need free help with finances from a Christian perspective. And we would love to have those resources available to us by podcast because we're busy. And in fact, we use, listen to podcasts on Spotify. So this is one problem that's expressed within five layers of context. And let's just download and debrief that. So there's six layers of criteria that are expressed in this person's definition of the problem that they face. Well, first of all, they're an engaged couple. So they're talking about their age and stage. Well, we know that there's at least 20 different scenarios of age and stage of marriage. They define that cost is a problem. They're looking for a free solution. Easily, there's more than five so scenarios that someone might express related to the cost that, that, they, can, uh, that they can afford. Now, thirdly, the context is based on the problem. This couple is struggling with how to manage their finances. And we've identified easily 80 to 100 problems that people commonly experience in their marriage. Well, there's a, yet another layer of context, and that is a lot of times people want to find a resource that represents their faith tradition or maybe their, their values. And so there's many, easily more than 20 different scenarios that someone might present related to this perspective. Next is delivery. Some people like books. Some people like podcasts. Some people want a video. Some people want a live event. There's actually dozens of different delivery formats that these resources are available to. And people prefer different forms of delivery. And even to build on that uh, context is there are certain platforms. Well, I love that you're on Apple, but I'm on Spotify. <laughs> so the delivery platform matters. So there's multiple layers of criteria that people use to define the problem that they face. And it takes us back to this statement, which I believe is true. And that is the unique challenges that couples collectively face can represent thousands of different scenarios. So we live in an age of specialization where we find that sometimes the most effective solutions are found within the most specialized interventions. Okay, <laughs> maybe you're saying, I'm still overwhelmed. <laughs> I can't get past the fact that there's over a thousand resources for marriage. Why do we truly need this? And what can we do about it? Well, here's what we want to do about this is we're creating a resource to help you manage the sheer size and scope of the number of resources available. There's a staggering number of resources available to us. And so we're creating this resource, this website to help you make sense of all these things that are available to you as a church leader. And here's how we're going to tame the giant of so many resources. Number one, at marriageresources.org, we're going to give you a centralized location. You're not going to have to browse all over the internet. You can go to one place to look for the resources that are right for you in the context of what you're leading in your church. The second of all, and maybe the most important part of Taming the Giant, is to give you consistent presentation of the data. 
that you can see information that's presented consistently among all the different resources that are available to you. Thirdly, we're going to support that data with original content, original content that's created to help you make decisions about which resources are right for you. And an example of this is the Up Close and Personal series. This is a video interview series that we do that's built for church leaders. So we interview these incredible authors and speakers from around the country. We've, uh, we've done this uh, in many different ways, but we're presenting these video interviews to you in a way that well, is what we call up close and personal. So for instance, if you were to invite one of these authors into your house and you were gonna sit in the living, living room with them, what would it look like for you to be able to uh, learn more about them and who's behind the resource? Because that's important to you. And finally, we're building this resource for you as a marriage leader. That's how we intend to tame the giant. Because see, it's not so much that there are too many resources for us to comprehend as it is that the information as it currently exists is not effectively gathered and presented. That's what's key to all of this. Now, I want to use an example from a different industry. And uh, so many of the people working in the marriage space uh, uh, are seeking funding for their work and foundations are an important part of that funding. And so there's a similar problem in a different industry. And well, let's look at how they addressed the problem that they faced and how they were able to tame the giant. So in the world of foundations across the United States, there are more than 76,000 present uh, foundations, 76,000 foundations who collectively have combined assets over a trillion dollars in every year give away 47 billion dollars of those dollars so we want to uh, uh to find information about which foundations might be interested in funding us but there's 76,000 of them so this is who addressed this problem and it's addressed on the foundation site uh, the foundation center by a new organization called candid and on this foundation center website they created profiles for a, roughly a quarter of a million of these foundations, more than 240,000 grant maker profiles that they created. And what did they do to tame the giant? Well, this sound, might sound familiar, but they gave us a centralized location, the Foundation Center. And most importantly, they gave us consistent presentation of the information through profiles. And also around that information, they created original content to help you make decisions. And the content was made for the fundraiser, fundraisers and grant makers who use this information. That's how they tamed the giant. Getting back to marriage resources, we need a thousand marriage resources because there's 10,000 unique problems that people have in their marriage. And let me just share with you that working toward a solution to this problem isn't new. This is something that we've been collectively working on for many years. And I wanted to share this with you. This is my friend, uh, one of our board members, Dennis Stoika, receiving the uh, Smart Marriages Impact Leadership Award. He won this award for his work in pioneering something called the Orange County Marriage Resource Center. And, uh, and Dennis did a great job of taking what was available to a community and putting it in a way uh, at a centralized location that presented information in a consistent way. And these are some of the things that people said about Dennis during his Smart Marriage Award. He said that many of us in the movement have been here since 1997, and many of us can remember the marriage education movement before Dennis Stoika and after Dennis Stoika. And it was a big change. <laughs> and I just want to say something personal about my friend. And this is what was quoted uh, during his award ceremony that I think should be repeated. And it is that Dennis happens to be one of the nicest, gracious, generous, and most engaging persons I have ever met. And I would conclude that that is true. And I just want to share as I close this uh, from a very personal uh, context. And that is uh, my wife and I are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. And uh, early in our marriage, we had a really fun early marriage. Uh, Kelly and my, our marriage was based on an incredible friendship. We had so many common interests. We loved being with each other. And our marriage in large part was just really amazing from the start. 
But there was a problem that we had in our marriage. It wasn't a serious problem, but it became serious to us. It was a problem that we just couldn't seem to find an answer for. It was a problem that lingered for about 10 years. And it was just kind of always in the background of our marriage. And one day I uh, was reading through a, a family magazine, a little bitty half page article. And in that little bitty article, what today would be no larger than a social media post generally, we discovered a solution to that nagging problem. And in that solution, our problem was solved. And so in the 30 following years, that no longer was a problem. And that's the beauty of the marriage resources that are available to us as church leaders, as community leaders, is that these resources have the ability to create transformational change in the life and destinies of married couples and ultimately families for the benefit of children. And so I'd love to just thank you for your time today. And I'd love to challenge you to not be overwhelmed by the sheer size and scope of the many thousands of resources that are available to us, but to embrace the fact that we're going to find a better way to sort through what's available to us so that we can help couples find better outcomes.